Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, depending on where in the world you are zooming in from. Um, I'm glad to have you joined and we will be starting in just a couple of minutes to give uh, some other people time to join as well. Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, depending on where in the world you're zooming in from. Uh, welcome to Hyperledger Foundation in-depth webinar with Ziv about enterprise DevOps automation for launching and managing your blockchain network. We will be starting in just a couple of minutes to give people a chance to join. While we wait, I would encourage you to use the chat to say hello, uh, tell us where you're zooming in from. I'm zooming in from Heidelberg, Germany, where it's currently 7 p.m. in the evening. We'll be starting in just a couple of minutes. Hello, everybody that's joining, and good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, and uh, welcome to the Hyperledger Foundation in-depth webinar. Uh, we'll get started in a couple of minutes, and while we wait, please use the chat to let us know where you're zooming in from and just to say hello. Hello, everybody joining us. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where in the world you are zooming in from. Um, you are very uh, welcome, and we're happy to have you at our Hyperledger Foundation in-depth webinar with Ziv on enterprise DevOps automation for launching and managing your blockchain networks. We are delighted to share our next webinar with you. Um, my name is Tomar Sede, and I'm an ecosystem manager at the Hyperledger Foundation. Today, I will have a chance to introduce you to our panelists and also take you through some housekeeping. So our panelists for today are Sankalp Sharma, who is a co-founder and VP of engineering at Ziv, and Lakshar Gaur, a blockchain architect at Ziv Inc. First, as and as usual, if you uh, attended any other Hyperledger Foundation webinars, we have some housekeeping. First of all, I would like to emphasize that everyone is welcome in the Hyperledger community. Uh, we are committed to creating a safe and welcoming uh, community for all. Uh, so please follow our co code of conduct when interacting with each other and when talking to other people in community as well. You can find our code of conduct in our wiki on, and on our web page as well. All Hyperledger Foundation member webinars are held under antitrust policy, um, <clears throat> which you can find on our wiki and on our web page as well. We are recording this webinar and the recording will be available for you to review later in our webinar library and also on YouTube. And we are also live on YouTube. So hello, everybody joining us on the YouTube as well. Now, we encourage these sessions to be as interactive as possible. So please stay active. Uh, and the more active you are, the more everybody will um, get out of it. So please use your raise your hand button to get unmuted and to speak up. And we will have a Q&A session after uh, the presentation. Um, you can also use either chat or Q&A box, and we will be answering those questions as well. 
Uh, for those following us on YouTube, uh, please use the comment on YouTube and we will get to your questions uh, also. Now, without further ado, um, I would like to uh, give the word over to Sankalp and Lakshay. Um, and really looking forward to the presentation. Sankalp and Lakshay, over to you. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we're very happy to be here and present you what you what we've been working on. And hopefully you guys will be uh, as excited to see what we've got uh, for you as much as we are to show you. Um, I'll share my screen and I think we can just quickly go over what the whole agenda is about. So we've been here at Z, we've been working at uh, blockchain automation for quite a while now. Uh, we started working with Hyperledger of Fabric when it was just a nascent level project uh, at its alpha stage. Uh, we remember the 0 0.5, 0 0.6 version when it was first introduced. And we were just uh, some crazy researchers trying to you know, pull some threads into it and trying to make something happen. Uh, those were some complicated days, but uh, yeah, a lot has changed since then. So what have we seen over our experience with Hyperledger community with all the blockchain um, interest that has been peaking around the world? We found that you know, there's so much of uh, potential that is still untapped, and, uh, but much of it is now getting converted to a good extent. Right? But over the time we're working with so many domains, we found out that the adoption is still very slow. And there are a lot of challenges that companies like our uh, face ourselves uh, at the time. And these adoption challenges are usually somewhere which are unexpected uh, than what most people would expect. So we know that blockchain has been picking up quite a bit, especially on the enterprise segment, where we have, we understood and decided our strategic priority. Uh, blockchain in production has increased quite a bit. And we've got so much of uh, technical strength, you know, bringing, contributing to our blockchain projects around the globe. So that has really picked up as well. We've seen a lot of value chains, uh, creating assets and putting it on blockchain. And people can really confidently say that it's really uh, giving value to what our uh, processes are. Um, and we can see governments all around really uh, you know, giving a good participation to all of this and making things happen, which is uh, really grateful uh, you know, for us to uh, be to them. And it's supposed to go more and more from here only. Uh, right? it's, it's only getting started. But what were the challenges that we actually saw? Um, they were around not as much as development or, or testing or thinking around outside the box. That was where we had too many brains over much of the blockchain projects, so that was already happening. But the difficulties were more from the infrastructure side, more from the DevOps side, that people didn't really understand how to treat this um, as a technology. Right? So they had a lot of trouble. People had a lot of learning curve when it came to picking up blockchain frameworks like such as Hapled Fabric. Uh, there was a big learning curve to understanding the depths of it, uh, what is security, why standard for it, what is you know good for your project, for your performance, what kind of topology you should go for. There was just too much. And then you would expand your consortium to a second stakeholder and you would come to the same amount of challenges multiplied by the amount of stakeholders. Right? The second one would mean that you have to redo it again, perhaps in a different uh, deployment strategy with a different cloud provider or something like that. So uh, adoption was really slow and difficult and it's too costly, too painful. So we came over to so trying to solve this problem for ourselves and that's when we came about to having Zeep as a platform, which can help us manage our blockchain networks, scale our blockchain networks, scale our consortiums, and still you know use the tools of today to do the things for tomorrow, right? You know, that's the whole purpose of how, how we came about to having Zeev as a platform. Um, Zeev is heterogeneous to all cloud departments, so you can configure uh, your own cloud account uh, to which you want to deploy your adoption networks nodes towards. Um, it can provide you real-time monitoring analytics for your blockchain nodes and networks, so it captures not only system-level details, but also uh, blockchain-level details as well, which are very much relevant for you and very hard to come by when you are uh, managing your blockchain networks. Um, it ultimately solves your time. It, it, it cuts down your time by quite an extent. 
you can create your DAP applications in just a fraction of the time that you could have done otherwise. And uh, all of this pretty much means that you can cut down your cost by 60%. That's what we've observed. This is on the uh, Alenian side of uh, things. It, it can cut down your uh, market, time to market by 90%. And that's because much of the complications go towards DevOps automation uh, of your environments, whether it's dev staging prod and then scaling your prod to other stakeholders. So that can take quite a bit. So it cuts down your time to market by quite a bit. And we've got a whole community for you guys for you to, for, for you to make benefit from. So we've got a lot of bunch of a big knowledge base and uh, we standardized basically all the deployments together. So the same way that the biggest enterprise would deploy and manage their networks, the same way that you would be deploying your nodes and networks as well. So a couple of things that we can maybe discuss, you know, uh, talk about uh, is that multiple cloud provisioning. So we support again, multiple clouds. You can, in a matter of few clicks, have your network deployed in just a bunch of minutes or otherwise, you know, it will take in to uh, a month or two. And then again, you will be worried about the security still because you really don't know how your network, which you created from scratch would behave. You would have unified dashboards and the security is something that, uh, you build it once and it is automated and present for everybody for the platform. So that's what we provide as a speciality that you can make benefit from. Uh, blockchain integration, so you can integrate, use it for different tools, different services. And uh, you know it, it provides a bunch of services like T as well, decentralized storage. So it's got a bunch of things provided together and what we like to call ourselves is like we're trying to be the AWS of Web 3.0. And uh, yeah, we hope, hopefully are able to deliver on those promises. You've got resource monitoring, uh, auto scaling, healing, unified dashboards again for all of this bunch of stuff where you can see your alerts. You've got a network visualizer, you've got CICD pipelines for you for your blockchain networks. And again, you have a bunch of stuff that you can always explore us more and more for. So, Z for Hypergy Fabric is uh, such that we've got a bunch of features we've been working on for quite a while. And uh, while you can start from deploying, creating, upscaling, and onboarding people to your network, you can use it for doing a lot of monitoring as well. You can check the system metrics as well as blockchain metrics that will come about to uh, in this demonstration itself. You can do a lot of node management. You can add, stop, start, restart nodes. So all kind of node-based operations is something that you can do from a, a UI panel itself. Your smart contract. So smart contract management is very um, specific uh, there's a specific way every blockchain protocol uh, provides that you should be able to deploy your chain codes or smart contracts to and we try to standardize that methodology to all our customers using our own tools that we provide uh, which again will be uh, showcasing you uh, we've got CLI operations for integration with tools so it doesn't matter you use jenkins or gitlab say or github actions or you use, you use terraform or ansible for setting up your uh, infrastructure side of things uh, our CLI tools can really integrate and fit really well with your tools that you're using currently in order to allow you to automate your uh, deployments as such. We've got alerts and loggings, which are present of, uh, for our so, uh, for our customers. So if you're having any issues, let's say your node is not syncing or it is not connected with other nodes, we're able to give you alerts, show you alerts that your node is not behaving the, that way it should. We also show if any RPC connections is having issues, it's getting broken down again and again. We send all those all of those kind of alerts as much as possible. Uh, fully flexible fabric topology. So ultimately, it's it's you who should decide how your topology should fit in, who should hold the order nodes, CA nodes, all those kind of stuff. And giving maximum flexibility is where Z sits beside everybody else uh, in in all of this. And of course, you know. Being part of a platform, you can use our, our, our services uh, for 24-7 support uh, from our uh, DevOps experts. So just a little bit of explanation how a lot of our customers, a lot of enterprises you see today uh, is that they've got their traditional tools, um, their uh, you know, uh, methodology is still intact uh, of Jenkins or, or Terraform, but they are able to integrate Ziva as a platform within those tools itself in order to make all of this happen, whether it's setting up the environment from the very beginning, or it's or there's CICD bits where you are constantly creating your smart contracts, your application, and you're able to deploy them uh, as you go along uh, for your projects. 
So Ziv has CLI tools that you can utilize within your repos. You can integrate them. You can deploy your chain ports in just a matter of few actions. And all the signatures that are required will be able to pick up from there. We'll be able to do so. And we'll be able to deploy your chain ports perfectly within your nodes. And if there's any issue, let's say if your chain ports are running too many uh, and your cluster is currently having a lot of issues with scaling with the performance because of there are too many containers, and we also give those insights as well in terms of alerts that can reach to you uh, over email or in app notifications and such. So this is what we are. And of course, you know, we've got, we've been very really lucky, very really fortunate uh, to be able to have so many interesting customers, many people in the community looking to our platform, giving us a lot of feedback. And hopefully that is what uh, we'll be able to get from you guys uh, in, in the coming time to uh, help us grow even more. So I think we'll switch over to the uh, demonstration now. My colleague here, Lakshya, will uh, bring up his screen and I think we can show you some cool bits so you can get a good idea about what we've been working on. Over to you, Lakshya. Sure. Thank you, Sankal. Hi, guys. Uh, welcome to the webinar. Let me share my screen and then we can start with the platform demonstration. Right. So I've already logged into my uh, Zeev account. Uh, you can ob obviously check it out at zeev.io. Uh, there are a bunch of protocols that we support as of now. And uh, you, there are options to you know sign in. And if you're a new user, you can uh, sign up with uh, uh, much of your social handles using Google uh, account or uh, GitHub account. Or if you want to create your account with just, uh, just your email, you can do that. So. So if you log into your Zeev account, there are a bunch of components that you see uh, when you go go to the dashboard. Um, we provide you, you know, multi subscription details, your cloud usage distribution to understand what are your cloud uh, uh, consumptions as of now with your different blockchain workloads and services. And then there are components that are that you're using inside Zeev, uh, which includes networks, nodes, and the endpoints that are, that you're consuming. And then we have protocolized distribution of uh, your networks and uh, uh, blockchain services, and then some system health sets that help you understand your uh, Zeev account usage. Now, before you start uh, uh, creating network on Steve, uh, there, there are two ways that you would want to uh, create a network. So let's take a look over this on how to authorize a cloud account or how to, uh, you know, uh, what the step one that you should take when you're going to create a network with Steve. So Steve supports uh, two approaches when you're creating a network which is uh, BYOC, which we call, which is bring your own cloud. And then Zeev supports managed uh, uh, Zeev deployments in which uh, you don't have to worry about cloud account or uh, cloud deployments. You just have to uh, get the subscription from Zeev and uh, Zeev will create the infra services for you. F so for an enterprise network, you would want the uh, uh, services running inside your own cloud services. So for that, uh, you, you would want to come to uh, my cloud section settings and then authorize your own cloud account. So let's say uh, you want to authorize your AWS account. Uh, you would select my cloud and then you would select AWS from here and then you would select add AWS button. Now this form is going to ask you a few details on um, the label of this uh, credential that you want and then access key and secret key that you can generate from your IAM section of AWS. So when you're generating these keys, you can also limit this user with a bunch of permissions uh, according to the you know, network requirement that you're going to create. And then we have this extra credential label which helps you identify your uh, credential that you're creating with Zeev. Now with this feature, you have the capability of um, uh, creating heterogeneous cloud networks where uh, you can deploy a bunch of workloads in one cloud and then uh, you can create a bunch of, uh, bunch of other workloads in a different cloud account. For example, let's say part of your network is deployed in AWS and then part of your network is also deployed in DigitalOcean so that it helps you migrate the services and helps you cut down the cost, uh, gets a benefit out of both and everything. Uh, same goes for DigitalOcean. If you want to add your uh, DigitalOcean account with Zeev, you can select DigitalOcean and then you can select add DigitalOcean cloud button. And then it is going to ask you for API key, which you can generate from uh, DigitalOcean settings button. And then you can also provide permissions there. Um, which is a uh, read and write permission for uh, Zeev to get uh, started with your network creations. Now, after you have uh, authorized your cloud account, you would want to um, get started with your uh, Zeev network. Now for that, uh, we can come to dedicated node section 
in, in and your dedicated node section would be different than mine. Uh, I already have two networks deployed here, one Ethereum and one Hyperledger Fabric network. So in your uh, account, which is obviously uh, without a network, you would see just an ad network button there. Once you click this, uh, it is going to uh, ask you to buy a subscription. Or if you've already bought a subscription from Zeev, you're going to see the list of subscriptions from uh, uh, the subscription subscription that you've bought. Now, uh, let's say you want to create a fabric network with DigitalOcean subscription. You would want to select uh, BYOC DigitalOcean. Now, in my account, I have both a subscription even for AWS and DigitalOcean both. Now, uh, you're on to fabric network creation page. The entire fabric network creation page has been divided into four steps. The first three steps uh, are all blockchain steps that you have to decide. And then the last step is about cloud configuration that you want your network to be created with. The first step is going to ask you to decide the fabric version that you want to go with. So uh, we support two LTS versions. Uh, one is 2.2. And then one is uh, 1.4, other one is 1.4. So with 1.4, you have choice of consensus between Raft, Solar, and Kafka. And with 2.2, we only have Raft supported since other uh, consensus type have been deprecated in this version. So let's say you want to go with this latest LTS version, which is 2.2. You select Raft as your consensus type, and then you click Next. Now in this step, you have the capability to decide your organization level details in which you will click uh, add organization button, and it is going to ask you to decide your organization configuration. So first thing that you would want to do is name this organization. So let's say I want to name it organization one, and then I have to decide my CA admins username and password. Uh, so I'm going to put down org one admin here. Then same, I can put down for password as well. Uh, you would want to uh, secure your passwords with uh, you know uh, uh, different password policies that uh, your company or your or your individual uh, comply with. Um, and then you have uh, persistent volume checks, which allows your CA services or any blockchain service that you're going to create in this section be spawned up with uh, a persistent volume, which helps you take a backup of the service. Also, uh, if you uh, want to shut down this service for a while, you can do that. And when you create the service once again in your cluster, this is going to be uh, uh, created with the point where you stopped it. Um, so you can put down uh, volume size and everything according to your own uh, requirements. Or you, if you don't want to uh, bear an extra cost, you can uncheck this button. Every volume creation is going to be creating, creating an additional cloud volume inside your cloud account. And then we have uh, order services that you would want to create in your uh, organization. So it, let's say I want to create just one organization network. I would want at least three orders inside my uh, network. So I can do so, I can do so with the with add order button. And then I would want to add peer my into my network. And if I go down below, I'll see that there is one default peer already. Now with Zeev, you have choice of uh, database for your peers to start with. Uh, default choice of database would be level DB. And if you have complex uh, queries in your smart contracts, you would want to create your peer service with CouchDB. Now with CouchDB again, uh, uh, you have this check for persistent volumes, which creates your CouchDB service with an additional cloud volume. And then you can also specify the size for it. Uh, but if you want to go with low go with level DB, you can just uh, scale up your peer volumes and that helps you uh, again, uh, take backups of your peer services and uh, maybe stop it if you're not using it in your network. And at the end section, we have CSR details, which is certificate signing request, which helps you create your certificates of uh, uh, organizations with the details that you provide here. So this is an optional step. Uh, if you want to fill these details out, you can definitely do so. Otherwise, if, you, if you're just creating a staging network, a test environment or a dev network, you, you would want to uh, skip this step to fast pace your development process. At the end, you would want to click next. And, it, and, and after this, um, we have channel details. So we have completed, we have selected the version, we have selected the organization settings, and now we're on to our last blockchain step, which is deciding upon my system channel details, which, which are my global blockchain uh, configuration. And then I have this provision of creating an application channel as well. So with this check, uh, you're going to bootstrap your network with an application channel so that your all of your blockchain services and workloads are going to be started with a default channel, uh, a bootstrap channel to be uh, precise. Uh, uh, and every peer that you've created in the organization section is going to join this peer, uh, sorry, channel. So once you click this next step, 
um, it is going to ask you for your cloud configuration details at the end. And in here, because I selected my BYOC DigitalOcean account uh, subscription, it has already picked and selected DigitalOcean for me. Now my last step is to uh, name my network. So let's say I want to uh, just name it uh, Dev Network or anything that I want to, I can do so. Uh, so let's say I want to create a high pillage fabric dev network here. And then uh, there is choice of workspace that you have. So workspaces are logical entities uh, that Zeev helps you encapsulate to your network in. So you would want to div uh, divide your networks uh, according to your uh, departments or maybe environments that your company or, uh, or your individual department is handling with. So you can divide your workspaces maybe uh, uh, in, in, in uh, staging environments or uh, production environment or pre-prod environments uh, with these workspaces section. So for me, I've only decided uh, uh, workspaces in between the choice of protocols that I go with. So for me, uh, uh, public nodes are there and then there are a bunch of uh, permission protocols for this network I want to go with, fabric networks. And then I have to decide what uh, cloud account I want to go with. So I only have Zeev uh, uh, demonstration credential attached to my DigitalOcean account. Uh, so I can select it here and then I have to decide the region that I want to deploy this network in. So all of these regions are supported by DigitalOcean. Let's say I want to deploy it in NYC one region. And then I have to decide the number of worker nodes that this uh, Kubernetes cluster that I'm going to create with this uh, uh, network, uh, how many number of instances I would want to go with. So let's say I want to go with three number of worker nodes, and then I want to decide the instance details, uh, which is um, the type of worker nodes that I want my network to be started with. So let's say I want to start with uh, two vCPU and four GBF RAM. I can do so with uh, this checkbox here, uh, this drop down here. So I've selected all of my details. Now all, all I have to do is click create. Now when I do this, it is going to check if my cloud account has enough permissions and enough quota available to start with the network. So yeah, I did, and my network has successfully initiated. Now it is going to take a while to spin up my cloud services and create my uh, gate cluster inside uh, my DigitalOcean account. Uh, so that is why you're seeing all the uh, red icons here. So it says that all of the services have been stopped as now because it is not seeing the live status for them. Now, if I check my notification sections, uh, yeah, so I have an infrastructure in provisioning. Uh, it, is, it is going to take at least uh, 15 to 20 minutes to uh, get provisioned, uh, 10 minutes to start the, to create the infra and then a few minutes to provision our blockchain services onto this infra. Now to save us some time, I have one deployed, already deployed network here, uh, which we can see, which is our demo fabric network. Now, if I go inside this network, I have a bunch of uh, options available for me. I have a, a graphical view representation of my organization that I've deployed inside this uh, network. And I have a bunch of services that belongs to this organization and uh, are particularly are, are ultimately owned by me. So when you create these services inside your networks, you get to uh, uh, take the full ownership of these services, which includes uh, deleting these services from your uh, network or restarting or stopping these services if you want to save some cloud uh, uh, cost. Uh, so in this list, you'll see the cloud account uh, that this service was deployed with, uh, the type of organization that the service was deployed with, the type of service that uh, it is, and the region the service was deployed inside. So this network was deployed inside U, uh, US West 2 region of AWS and um, then, they, then we have a deletion option here and then restart and stop button to stop these services from my network. And after you have deployed your network, uh, the next thing that you would want to do with is uh, connect your application SDK with your uh, blockchain network. And for this, we have uh, artifact section here, which helps you download these crypto artifacts, which contains uh, uh, enough uh, crypto material to connect your application SDK with this. And then you need a connection profile. If you're working on uh, Node.js SDK uh, for Hyperledger Fabric, uh, it requires a connection profile to communicate with your uh, peer services and order services. So for the, so to save some development time there, we have this option here already, which helps, which creates automatic um, connection profiles for your uh, organization. So if I open this attachment, I should see the connection profile here. Uh, so I have two connection profiles for ORG1 and ORG2, which are part of my network. So if I open this up, it is going to show me um, 
the entire JSON object. So yeah, it is there. Uh, it's not, uh, it has uh, intendation and then you have everything there. You can just plug it in then uh, in your application SDK and then you can start interacting with your network. Now this, this covers up your uh, application interaction, but as a network admin, you would want to control your network and you would want to see uh, how your services have been deployed and you would want to take ownership of your network in terms of uh, cluster and its services. So for that, you can download uh, crypto artifacts. And once you download crypto artifacts, you will see um, it has uh, your Kubernetes authorization as well, which helps you uh, see all the workloads that have been deployed and also these services that are running there. So if I extract this, I should be uh, should be able to see the um, uh, things inside it. Then we extract it and then we can go to our terminal and we'll see the services that have been deployed inside. Right. We'll come back to this section in, in just some minute. Uh, and then we have a bunch of actions with our networks. So you can add organizations with with uh, fabric networks. You can add more peers into your organizations. You can uh, create more channels and ultimately you can see the blockchain details that this network is deployed in. So let's say how, so let's see how easy it is with Zeev to create an organization into your uh, blockchain network. So add organization is divided into a few steps. Uh, first thing that you would want to uh, uh, select is, or decide is the name of the organization that you want to add into your network. So let's say I want to uh, name my organization ORG3, and then the application channel that you want to deploy this or, or create this organization into. So let's say I want to uh, create this organization into my uh, bootstrap channel, which was my channel. And then I want to decide the admin username and password for my CA that is going to be created inside my organization. So let's say I want to again go with the same password policy with the OG3 admin and the same password as well. And then these same options for uh, persistent volumes there. Uh, if you want to uh, check these uh, buttons, it will create your uh, persistent volumes for these services. And then I can add more peers into my organization and. Uh, Again, the choice of databases that you would want to go with your, with your peer services. So let's say I want to go with default level DB settings here. And I can uh, also decide my CSR details just like before. And then there's this last step, which, uh, which is going to ask you to, um, if you want this creating on organization to be added into the network consortium. So it allows you to uh, add order uh, with this organization, which is going to be uh, uh, spinning up with an order service. And then we have configuration, which allows uh, this organization uh, uh, settings and uh, reader and writer and admin policies, as well as endorsement policies. So let's say if I want to add an order, I can do so, and I can decide my uh, reader, writer, and endorsement configurations. So for this, uh, we can select what type of entities should be uh, a reader for this organization. So let's say I want uh, any member to be this uh, to be the reader, to be the reader. And let's say I want to go with the same choice for writer settings as well. And then for admin, we only support uh, admin configuration. And then for endorsement, you have a peer only to be endorsing this uh, uh, chain code or uh, anything uh, that happens inside this organization. Once I click create, it is going to do a bunch of uh, crypto uh, material, uh, crypto signing uh, for my proposal that I've uh, just created for my uh, third organization. And uh, it is going to uh, uh, spin up the uh, organization uh, uh, blockchain services and nodes inside my cluster. Uh, so it is going to take a few minutes. Uh, meanwhile, we can see how you can create an application channel into your network. Uh, so if I click create, uh, then there is a create channel form, which is again divided into a few steps. Uh, first step is to decide the organization configuration for my application channel. And then second step is steps to decide the organizational permissions for this channel. And the last step is to uh, decide the number of peers that you would want to uh, make uh, join this channel. So let's say I want to add a channel with um, NFT channel here. So after this, you can uh, decide the organizations that you want it to be part of. Let's say I want ORG1 and ORG2 to be part of this application channel. Then I can decide the individual configurations for these, these uh, organizations. So let's say I want to go with the same approach here as well. 
Uh, we can decide admin policies, and then I can also decide the endorsement policies from our organization for this channel. And the same goes for second organization as well. Right. So after deciding all of my uh, policies, uh, you would want to create, uh, uh, go to next step. And at this point, I want to decide my uh, application configuration policies and channel configuration policies. So uh, you can decide the uh, 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 the proposal that that it, that it should accept from. So let's say I want it to be either from organization one or organization two, and then uh, I want it to be uh, same for writer policies as well. And then for admins, let's say I want to go with majority admins. Um, same I can do for lifecycle endorsement as well. So these are the bunch of, these are the combinations that uh, Zip creates for you uh, uh, when you uh, are creating an application channel. Uh, and then in channel, in channel configuration, you can also decide um, which policy you would want to go with. Let's say I want to go with any reader, and then I want to go with any writer, and same for admin settings as well. And next step, uh, it is going to ask me to, uh, choose my uh, peers services that I want this uh, uh, channel to be part of. So let's say I want my every peer to be part of this channel in ORG1 and ORG2 both, I can do so. I can click create and it is going to add NFT channel to my network. Right, that's amazing feature uh, because otherwise, you know, your major focus is to just to make the organization participate in your network and you really overlook what kind of permissions are they going to be using uh, being part of your consortium so zeev allows you to do it in a couple of minutes and uh, keeps your focus on what kind of permissions are you actually granting uh, each and every organization into your uh, network so yeah next year yep thank you Sankar. uh right so i think uh Let's go to a terminal and see the the blockchain workloads that have been deployed in this network. Uh, let me copy my artifact artifacts from uh, the from the artifact that we downloaded. All right. Let me copy the artifacts from my local repository uh it should be here actually i can't see my screen uh, it's it's uh, occupied by uh zooms uh, from there so i want to download my artifacts from my download directory do so there i have it right we have our artifacts with us if i want to uh, select my cube config file here i can do so with this and if i want to check the workloads that have been deployed i can do so all right, yeah, so we see uh, the blockchain workloads that have been deployed so far. So I can see um, uh, there are workloads for organization one, and then there are workloads for organization two. So some of the workloads for uh, second organization have been deployed with the uh, uh, CouchDB for one of the peers. And with blockchain three, I have uh, just one peer running with level DB there. And it is go also going to deploy uh, some of uh, Orders as well inside uh, my blockchain or G3 namespace. Now, um, if I um, want to uh, uh, check the logs of it, I can do so with the, with the same kubectl command and it gives you full ownership of your networks. It gives you uh, uh, the admin privileges. And let's say if you want to uh, remove some services from your networks, you can do that uh, without uh, uh, going to go to the Zeef panel again and again. So it just requires uh, some knowledge of uh, uh, Kubernetes to be working with these networks. Right. Now that And yeah, just to point out here, so we've got a couple of services which can help you get you some good analytics about what has been deployed and how's it doing? So we've got ZV agent, which allows you to you know, get a lot of insights of your network that I think we'll be checking out real quick uh, onto our dashboards, our, our analytics stream. 
Yeah, sure. I think we can go to uh, analytics then, and then, uh, and then we can go to pipelines to see uh, the uh, Zeev's, Zeev's automated CI/CD pipelines for your chain code and smart contracts that uh, that supports the uh, entire chain code lifecycle. So, like Sankal explained, that you get a bunch of uh, analytics for your networks, which includes blockchain level analytics and uh, your um, resource level analytics for uh, your blockchain networks. In here, I'm going to see uh, the utilize the basic uh, health utilization, which includes memory and CPU that is being consumed by my network as of now. Um, I can also uh, uh, see drill down reports of uh, you know worker node wise that have been deployed in here. Uh, same I can do with the namespaces that have been deployed. I can drill down to particular namespace and particular parts to see the exact details that that are being consumed by my pod or application. Uh, yeah, so the list, uh, so the details goes on. Um, you get to see network utilization, memory utilization, disk utilization, and then uh, you can also put down alerts for your uh, for the same uh, utilizations in, in in your cluster, which helps you be uh, you know uh, to keep your network healthy and running, and uh, helps you with the uptime of your blockchain services. Now we can also see the blockchain uh, uh, and level analytics for my peers and other services as well. So we capture these details and we're able to give you alerts on base of both system as well as uh, your blockchain uh, metrics. So let's say if your node is not uh, getting any RPC connection or is it it's not gossiping with other blockchain nodes, then uh, we are able to easily provide you the details and uh, show you all of those analytics as well. You can drill down to any specific uh, timeline in this whole duration and it gives you a lot of information of how to maybe you're, you're taking too much resource or you are not you're under under utilizing your clusters it will provide you all of that information as well right so let's so this is the new uh peer that i just deployed it will say if i select uh one of the peer that i've already deployed i should see some uh, different level of details i can see the chain codes that have been deployed in this uh peer and uh same goes on for order services as well Right, so I can see that there is one CLI uh, C Go one chain code that has been deployed. Uh, there have been uh, some comments onto my uh, blockchain, uh, sorry, ledger uh, uh, blocks. And uh, same goes for order services as well. You can uh, select it here. Right, so after this uh, analytics, you would want to uh, deploy your chain code onto your uh, blockchain networks. Uh, for that, we can uh, come back to our uh, pipelines and uh, configurations that are required to run these pipelines. So let's check out the pipeline section first, and then we can go to uh, the required authorization that uh, that should be there when you're running the uh, pipelines with ZCLI. So when you click pipelines, you get to see the list of pipelines that have been run on your application. If you don't have any pipelines running, you will see uh, an empty list here. Uh, so I've, I've I had to run a few pipelines in my in this particular network. And if I click on one particular pipeline, I can see the jobs that have been running inside it. And if I click on the particular job, I get to see the logs that this job produced. So this was a job which committed my chain code onto my network. So I can see that this was committed with a particular transaction ID, and I can see the valid commit status in my uh, commit job. Uh, now, before you start uh, working with chain code pipelines, there is an authorization process which uh, you have to uh, uh, perform in settings section. So other than uh, interacting Zeev uh, as an app, as a web application or as a web platform, we can also interact uh, with your Zeev networks using Zeev CLI uh, as a CLI tool. Now, in order to do that, you need an authorization, which you can uh, generate with the API credentials in your settings section. So when you uh, click on API credentials in your settings section, there is a create key button, which is going to open a form for you if you click it. And then you can provide a name to this uh, API key. Uh, so let's say for my network, it is a HLF network key. And then I can decide the type of uh, service that I want this key to be created for. Let's say I want to create a, a key for my networks. 
then I can select the network that I want to create this key for. So let's say I want to create this key for my new network that I just deployed. Then I can also decide my um, permission that I want this uh, key to have. So let's say I just want this key to run pipelines and uh, to only view pipelines, I can do so. And then um, I can click create key here. And uh, yeah, there we have it. Uh, we have our access key and secret key. I can copy it and I can uh, save it somewhere where I can uh, make use of it when I'm running the pipelines. So after you've done this, uh, you would want to go back to your uh, networks page. Uh, there we go. Uh, and you would uh, want to uh, go back to pipeline section. And uh, from here, you'll see that uh, there are no pipelines and then you can go to your um, uh, CLI uh, terminal again, and and there you can you can install Zeev CLI using npm package manager. So it's a simple command. You can do npm i Zeev, and then you can install it globally. With this, it is going to install Zeev uh, globally onto your uh, machine, and uh, from from the from this point onwards, uh, you can start using Zeev CLI. And uh, if I go to Zeev uh, CLI's help section, I can see the operation that it supports for fabric chain uh, codes. Right, so we support entire uh, chain code lifecycle, which includes packaging of chain code, installation of chain code, uh, chain code approval, deployment of chain code, and uh, at final stage, we allow you to commit your chain code. So now uh, let's say if I want to run a pipeline, I can do so. Uh, I think we can run this pipeline or we should be able to run this pipeline onto a new network that we just uh, deployed. Did we check if our network is ready? And if not, then we can run this uh, in our existing networks or should be able to. Right, so our network is ready. Uh, so yeah, it nearly took, uh, I think, 10 to 15 minutes to uh, get this network ready up and running. Um, now, if I go to my pipeline section, I can see that there is no data because there is no pipeline here. And if I go back to my um, details section, I can uh, see the uh, network details. So from here, I would want to get my network ID to uh, uh, to tell my uh, Zeev CLI tool which uh, network it should uh, target. Now I have one uh, script ready, which helps me run pipelines for uh, uh, my network. So let's go inside it. Right, so there we have it. Uh, I have my access key configured here. A uh, bunch of operations that I generally do when I'm running a network, when I'm uh, running pipelines on my network. Uh, so in network ID section, I want to uh, paste my network ID here. Now I have peer URLs. Um, so for that, I can get it from, um, sorry, I can get it from, my um, my network view section here. Let's say I want to can copy this service URL, and then I can paste it in here. Should be able to run my pipelines then. All right. So we have it all. Let's run it. Now it is going to um, package my chain code, which I already have in my uh, local directory. It's uh, it's a simple chain code. Uh, it's it's the marble chain code, which is uh, which has been modified to run as an external service. So if I go to my uh, Zeev account, I will see there is one pipeline. Yeah, so there is one pipeline which is running. So the yellow status tells us that this pipeline is running. If we go inside it, I can see the job. And in here, I can see that it is building my chain code. It is packaging it. And at the end, it's going to push it into my uh, uh, digital ocean registry, container registry. And from there, it is going to deploy it onto my cluster. Uh, same steps, uh, uh, same goes for uh, uh, here as well. If I want to download the artifacts, I can see the deployed workloads here uh, and, uh, and we can see the um, uh, cluster that has been created uh, from Zeev. Right, so with that, I think uh, we can conclude our demonstration our presentation uh, and I think we can open up the Q&A &A section or Q&A round. Right, Sankalp, over to you. Yeah, I've, I've been answering all these questions on the chat, actually. There have been quite a few uh, interesting people uh, you know, putting all kind of curiosity in places. So it's, it's good to see. Um, so right now, I don't think we have any open questions, but just to maybe go over them. Okay, I think we just found one now. So how 
the dev team can test the network locally. So, yeah, I mean, you can go ahead and create your applications for whatever purpose and you don't really have to spawn a network, set it up locally. Instead, you can just uh, come here, deploy the network in a couple of minutes, the topology that you want, uh, the number of orders belonging to different organizations and such. And uh, you can just use the connection profiles, use the artifacts that Lakshay has on right now on the screen. And you can connect to the nodes directly and you can uh, deploy your chain codes with the same actions and you can do all kinds of transactions. If you want to deploy a chain code, you can do it, use as each like tool as well, as this as Lakshay showed right now. And you can do all transactions as your application would usually do uh, using the SDK of Hyperion Fabric. We had a, okay, I think there's a second one as well. Is cloud migration possible? So we have done it for a bunch of our uh, customers previously because they have, you know, running a lot of times uh, for their projects and uh, we, we can help you out with all of that. So whether it's creating new certificates for your new domains or whether it's to migrate the whole data uh, from one cloud to another, to the platform, we can help you out with all of that. The step procedure is, of course, uh, manual it's not just a few clicks like this but hopefully one day we'll have the uh, you know automated there as well but yeah cloud migration is definitely possible we've done it a couple of times how about certificates backup so yes uh, every certificate is backed up uh, into your own uh, cloud uh, deployments um, as EBS volume so we have constant snapshots of whatever is being attached to your nodes and uh, there is problem backup maintained for your data as well as your uh, certificates as well. So a couple of questions I think we got earlier on, maybe I'll just put them out uh, while we have still have a couple of minutes. Um, we were asked if Hyperledger Fabric is part of a Docker containers of Kubernetes. It's Kubernetes clusters uh, that we go towards because that's a production grade deployment that most enterprises look towards. And uh, we usually use that, yes. Um, manage Kubernetes cluster to whichever cloud you're choosing. It's usually, but you also have bare metal, bare metal clusters for on premise deployments that we have uh, capability to do so uh, in some of the deployment strategies. Uh, what's actually use of persistent volume? So, persistent volumes are just for persistence of your data. A lot of times when you're doing development or, or testing, you don't really require so much data to be persistent because it can cost you on your cloud side. So just to save you on those costs, you know, you've got such an option to take it off when you don't need it. Can we use the same product for multiple on-premise uh, server deployments? Uh, so yes, you can, but on-premise deployments can be quite specific. So there can be a bunch of stuff, customizations that you may require to do so, but a lot of enterprises use it as that. Uh, where they need to have their optimist performance using on the servers. Okay, I think we've got maybe a couple more questions. Any explorer for blockchain data? So not really. Uh, we have gotten this question quite a few times. Uh, you can deploy, choose to deploy your own explorers to the blockchain uh, cluster that you have right now. But uh, we ask as if you want to provide it as such. You can look at a lot of analytics of chain codes and number of peers, your, your, each and every okay, node is connected to RPC connections, all of those bits which are specific to blockchain. But Explorer, which can, you can see all the transactions, so that's not something that Zeev provides uh, here. Uh, Zeev doesn't look into your blockchain data and such either. So you know, we don't have it, but you can all, always deploy it by yourself using the same connection profiles and details. Uh, what about private data collection? Does it support as a feature in Fabric 2.x? Yes. Uh, so this is something that we are trying to provide it over a UI also, but you can again choose to do it manually for the time being, but uh, we can, our, our CV experts can help you out uh, if you're struggling with any, any of uh, uh, private data collection setup and the pump. But uh, that's something for a December release that we've been preserving and hopefully we'll be able to roll it out uh, pretty soon. So look into that and you know, look for that. I think it'd be quite an interesting feature to have from this uh, platform. In the demo, it looks like uh, there's high, highly automated AWS and distribution deployment automation in particular. 
is this similar automation for other public protocols like GCP or as well? Yes. So uh, we've been working on GCP uh, and we've already had early, early access priority to some of our customers and we are oh, waiting for December to come by. Uh, where in December release, we can ex expect GCP and other bunch of fabric features uh, like sharing your consortium of the, around different cloud accounts, different uh, users who can log in as well, and then you can use it like that. So that's something that is coming in as well. That's it's going to be a big release, and we're looking very much forward to it. It's going to have a bunch of stuff that we've been gathering as input from you guys. All right, a couple of uh, comments here. Really appreciate it. Thank you, my very much. And yeah, I think that's it. Tomas, I think over to you. Uh, sorry if I took all those questions and started answering myself. <laughs> I think it's perfect. Um, so I think we have five minutes left. So if anybody would like to speak up, let me know. I can unmute you. Okay, otherwise, I think you covered everything, Sankal. Thank you so much. And thank you, Lakshya, as well. I think you covered. Um, really a great presentation as you can see in the comments as well and uh, you managed to cover really uh, a lot um so let us wrap this up and you know if you have any other uh, questions please feel free to reach out to us at hyperledger or the ziv team directly as well uh, and we'll be happy to assist you and connect you to the ziv team as well now to wrap it up, uh, I would like to, to invite you to join our Hyperledger Discord. We have quite an active Discord community and it's related to our projects, our special interest groups, our working groups, uh, regional chapters. I think we lost your voice there, Tomas. We, we can't hear you. Yeah, no, we can't hear you. Uh, maybe you just try to do a little bit with your earphones or something. Okay. Let yeah, I think there was sound there. Is it any better? Yes. Okay. Well, we're about to wrap this up. Thank you for pointing it out, Sankal. Um, so we have this Friday uh, Hyperledger Meetup London coming out, uh, where the demonstration of formally verified chain code generation for Hyperledger Fabric will be presented. Now, and this wraps it up. So thank you everybody for watching and thank you again, Stankalp and Laksha for this great presentation and very useful information. So feel free to reach out to us and to the Ziv team uh, whenever you have any questions uh, or comments. Thank you very much and hope to see you again soon. Thank you, appreciate it, bye. Thank, thank you, you, bye. bye.